the study was relying on, they looked at a few data sets of you know, reported green jobs created because of these uh, policies, and they, they picked you know, the, the middle one. So some were really optimistic, some were very pessimistic, and they picked a, a middle of the road one, and they were figuring about 50,200 green jobs, or, or sorry, renewables jobs per year. So the, the total number each year bounces around, and they were figuring you know, per year annualized, it's about 50,000 created. And so again, just saying how much did the government have to commit to generate this increase in the renewable sector? How many jobs do we think were created? Divide it through, and it's about $750,000 US per job. Okay, so that, again, is to show you that should be a, uh, an indication that, again, what, what's happening here is the government is trying to induce firms to use higher cost methods. So that, that's why there is a cost. Um, another, uh, one of the things that they stress in, in the study is they say, okay, we, we see the benefits in a sense, 50,000, depending on the estimate, look at jobs were created. What, what's the downside? You know, was there any job loss? And so the, the, this is one of the controversial things I'll talk about in a minute. The, the method in the study they use to say, well, what's the downside? Is to say, well, look, that money that the government is implicitly spending to create jobs in the solar panel sector and you know, wind farms, that money could have done something else, right? That through, whether through taxing or borrowing or inflation, you know, if the government's committing resources over here, those are fewer resources available in other sectors. So they looked at and they said, on average, you know, how many jobs are in the Spanish economy? How much total capital is there? So how much capital per job? And the, the number they figured is for the amount they were spending on stimulating green job creation or renewable job creation, about 2.2 jobs in the private sector could have been created if those resources, you know, if the government hadn't taken them from over here and steered them over there. All right, so that's the, um, the, the main uh, bullet points of the study. And to sort of underscore it a little bit, in April 30th of 2009, there was a, a royal decree that, was, that came out from Spain <coughs> And here I'm obviously reading you the translation. Uh, they had to, to scale back the feed and tariffs just because you know their economy, of course, is, is real, just as other major economies around the world, and this is very expensive to maintain. They have to keep these subsidies up to prop up these uh, expanded sectors, and so they had to scale back it a little bit. A little bit, and this is what they, the royal decree said that the uh, feed and tariff system quote is. Is, and again, this is a translation of the quote, is deeply harming the system and puts at risk not only the financial situation of the electric sector companies, but also sustainability of the system itself. This disadjustment turns out to be unsustainable and has grave consequences since it deteriorates the security and financial capacity of the investments necessary for providing electricity at the levels of quality and security the Spanish society demands. All right, so again, what they were finding is, look, we can't just keep pumping in the money. The, the other thing, Problem is a lot of the jobs created are in you know the, the building. So if you're going from basically no solar in 2000 to a capacity of about 3,000 megawatts eight years later, a lot of the stimulus, if you will, is in building these things. But once the plants get built and you reach up the you know the capacity where you want, you don't need all those workers to keep building new plants. And so the idea is to keep this boom going in these sectors. You would have to put, pump in more and more money if you wanted to keep it rising at least without, as other panelists have mentioned, if there's no penalty on carbon dioxide, right? Because that's what's, what's driving this. So uh, let me, let's see here, let me uh, not lie to you, I said I'd be quick. Let me, uh, let me just jump right to that, because that's, I think, the, the most important point, that people say, okay, that's fine, but global warming's an issue. And so it, it's true that the reason a, a lot of economists in the climate change area will say, yes, the reason fossil fuels are so competitive is because they're dumping carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and they're not pricing that. You know, they're not taking into account the climate change damages down the road. And so it's, you know, in terms of just strict dollars and cents, it looks more, it looks cheaper to produce electricity that way, but you're neglecting uh, these other things. And so you want it, the government should make them what's called internalize the externality. So even there though, I think it's true, it's safe to say that most academic economists working in this area, you know, if you set them politics aside, if you could design an ideal system to deal with the threat of climate change, how would you do it? It wouldn't be having the government pick certain sectors and say, we want to have you generate 20% by 2020. I mean, that number obviously is not popping out of some complicated model. It's just a nice round number to say 20% by 20, right? So that's not 
coming from the science per se, that you know, the government can sort of get a rough idea of, we think the answer would be in this direction, so we'll put resources here. But in terms of where do resources go, that's what the price system is for. So ideally, if you worry about global warming, I think most economists in this area would say the government should just set a flat tax on carbon or a cap and trade system, and that's it. Right? It, would, it wouldn't be a huge thousand page document. It would be very short, just a tax calibrated based on the latest science, and that's it, and then let you know, the winners and losers get determined in the market, supplemented with that you know, addition from the government. Okay, so again, on, on various levels, I'm just a, a little bit skeptical about some of these proposals that I think, I think it's wrong, this is the last point I'll make, I think it's wrong for people to believe this is a free lunch that, that you know, it's uh, not only do we get a reduction in carbon dioxide emissions and, and reduce global warming, but we create a bunch of jobs. No, there is a trade-off that the reason uh, electricity is so reliant on fossil fuels right now is that's the cheapest way to do it. So if you're worried about climate change and you want to shift away, okay, but there's, it comes at the cost of higher prices for consumers. All right, thanks.